G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. Well, before we start, I've got me fuel going. I've got me cold coffee, and I've got a um, apple and cinnamon muffin here. So that'll fuel me up for today's effort. And today, we're going to travel together in this video. All right, so sink yourself in and merge with me. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring back an old painting. But before we do, I'll just show you the um, canvas sizes there in centimetres. And also those people who want to know what they are in inches. All right. And as usual, we'll let the colours go up the screen as well. So you can pause it and write them down. So when you're painting along with this video, you'll know what colours you're going to use. All right. So back in uh, my video catalogue, video number 61, how to paint a beach and sand dunes, all right? Now you can see here, it's not a bad painting for a beginner, it's pretty good. So we're gonna do the same painting, but adding the bullshit detail effect that gives you that more of a wow factor. It's that bit more detail I want you beginners to learn to comprehend and incorporate into your art, okay? So you've virtually done this far. Now let's up the ante. Also, I want you to work out a relationship with your brushes. I'm always using a, an applicating brush to apply the medium to my board before, or my canvas before I'm gonna make my skies the way I do them. I have my blending brush, so I know what blending brushes I like to use and how they work for me. I know how this brush works for me. If I've just picked it up and start using it in a painting that I wanna cherish or maybe sell, uh, you might find that it's digging in or doing things you didn't know it would do, okay? So learn your brushes as you learn your paintings as well. And I like to use my fan brushes to incorporate clouds with different sizes as well. All right, so this is what we've done in back in 61, video number 61, how to paint uh, the beach and some dunes. And our sky, well, you can see the sky now. It's very dark. The clouds are pretty flat and the sky is pretty, uh, the water is very basic, and so are the dunes. I mean, it's not a bad painting for a beginner, but what I want to try and teach you beginners is let's add more detail and up the ante, because you can do it, you just need to know how. Now, I've got a pencil here, and my horizon line is somewhere about there, like that, and... I want to sort of have the beach coming onto the sand dunes. What I mean by that, where that other painting, I had the sand dunes in front of the water hitting the sand. I want to have them together. So if anything, we've got like a, a dune here. And maybe something a bit lower here. All right, and the water is gonna come onto our dune and maybe a nice simple wave out there somewhere, okay? Can you see that? I hope you can. And we're gonna have some clouds in the sky. Now on the board, I have all my simple, main, basic ingredients for the sky. I've got flowing white and I also have some retarder to retard that up. Now that retarder is gonna make the acrylic paint stay wet longer and it also allows me to blend so you get that look like you do in oils. I've got the blue colour for the sky, ultramarine blue, and these are going to be the shadow shades for the clouds, quinacridone magenta and I've got a toning grey out of a tube as well. So let's start by grabbing your familiar brush you can apply your paint to your canvas with and I know this paint brush here is going to work good for me. I'm picking up all that retarder, mixing it with the flowing white paint. And this is virtually gonna prime my canvas. Whether it's pre-gesso primed or not, I'm still gonna do this. All right, so I just put that pencil line there for you fellas, okay? I don't need to see it. So we wanna get that all onto the canvas there, mainly the sky, but I'm virtually priming the whole lot up because sometimes I've only done half, sometimes I haven't. And the times that I have only done half, I wish, oh, in my mind, I really wish I did the whole damn thing. Anyway, so that's why I'm doing it. You got your hairdryer ready as well? We'll use a hairdryer in this. 
Now, iron out those brush strokes. They don't have to be la di da perfect, but just so long as they're common sensingly neat. All right? Now that brush, I just want to wipe the excess off it. Okay. Pick up some of the blue. It's got a little bit of the um, retarder in there. And we don't want a dark blue sky like our first one was. So we'll start at the top and push it into the canvas and bring it down just to roughly your horizon line. Get it. Don't worry about your the angle of your brush strokes here. Just get the sky color in. See that white flowing paint for the retarder has lightened this blue up as well because we don't want a very powering blue sky. Now if you want, you can add a bit of darkness to the top if you think it needs it. Just put it there and blend it down and crisscross it down if it's not coming down enough for you. Got a hair there, get out of there you dog. Okay, now we want to put in our horizon line atmosphere that's quite polluted. You can either use another brush to mix it, or you, I'm just going to use this one. And I'm grabbing some of the quinacridone magenta, and I want to mix the purple hazy colour. Now, we've got it mixed with that ultramarine blue. Let's put it with some white and just see what colour it's going. Grab some of that white while you've still got it there. You don't want this very dark because it's going to dry dark as well. And like my horizon line's there, I want to start from there. And I want to ooze this up into the blue there, slowly but surely, but not too high. Just so we're getting that purpley haze in the sky. So now have a look. My horizon line is, where did it go? It's here. Okay. And there's that purple band. It's there and it's sort of gradienting out into the blue from this point here. Now for the clouds, I've got me two brushes. I've got a larger fan brush with the titanium white. I've got the smaller one to put in the shadow. So I want to bring in, I don't want the retarder in there. I don't know why I put retarder in it. The, the canvas already has retarder. Now just the litless bit of this, because it's very strong, and we want to kill the grey, just so it's got some of that those values there in it. All right, so that's going to be our shadow colour for the sky, all right? Get that all there. So that's pretty much the tone I want. Okay, now to get some clouds like they're coming over our head, there's our horizon line here. So if anything, you want to start just above that. And if anything, bring them out as a V. But the further away they are, the smaller they are, obviously. So we might just, I'm not going to go too close to the horizon line. I just want to get some smaller bands of clouds a bit higher and lower than each other. That'll do. Okay, and grab a blending brush to blend those. And also, with blending, you need paper towels and whatnot. So we're going to lightly blend that onto the um, board there that's already conditioned with retarder flowing paint in our sky colours, okay? These are the distance clouds. We've got to sort of bring them forward. If anything, I'm putting little little bums on them, little bottoms. Okay, let's just put some bottoms on them. So I'm picking up that other grey that I mixed, just to give them a bottom. And you want to sit that into that white cloud now, just so they blend together. There we go, we're getting some sort of realistic clouds now. These are going to look dimensional, they're not going to look flat like a fan. Take your time when you're painting, there's no rush. 
some people like to rush and learn everything in one day and just quickly get a painting done but you really need to learn everything now that paint on the board I can feel it grabbing all this do yourself a favor and keep them straight they're they're decent ones I'm not going to bother putting yumminess on them even though I feel like I really want to I won't <laughs> now we want to sort of come in the middle and V shape out over our head like there that'll do let's just do one on this side so you can see what I mean uh, keep him with the bottom blend keep the bottom on it we're not blending the hell out of it always like to bring them off the painting if we can don't have it stopping just there I'm dabbing it, stabbing it, and twisting it very lightly. See, that's pretty much what I did for the clouds in that painting back in the day, and that was it, it was done. So we're picking up this on the fan brush. And to give that the illusion, this is going to be the bottom. So very out there is the bottom, okay? It's all the bottom there and it's coming above <sighs> something there as well okay so let me just get this subtly sunk back into the cloud there keeping the bottom on that if you have cats keep them off your art area otherwise wrap your brushes up I used to let my cats go wild everywhere and I'm finding cat hair in everything and it's a bugger. I will quickly get something else here from the bottom. Pick up more paint. Don't forget if your applying brush is building up contaminated paint on it, dirty paint, wash it. Take your time and wash it. Quickly blend the bottom of that, giving it a bum. All the clouds coming forward, when they've got a bum on them, that creates the illusion that they're coming over our heads as well. If you're going to sink them down into the horizon line and the atmosphere, you'll lose that look of being over our head. Okay, let's quickly get the um, bottom colour on there. And these mid middle area clouds now they can have some yumminess in them to create that bold dimensional look. I've washed this brush and reloaded it just so as we can get some kind of yumminess happening in here. And the yumminess adds the boldness and dimension to your cloud, in my opinion. Keep it, blend it down, but leave some of the um, harshness of that there. Okay, and you'll see it starts adding the... Um, this, it gives it shape. It's not such a flat shape anymore. I was going to do this off camera, but I know people like to see everything get done. So you're sort of putting it on the edge, not on all the edge, and little bits of crackling bits just to give that grey some boldness. And now we'll put the, the final clouds on to give it the illusion that everything's over us. You can always put just the the litless bit of rubbish out there of clouds. Sometimes, well not sometimes, but they are there. Let's just kind of turn them in the clouds a bit. There's no 
really nice little ones. All right, now we'll just put something here over us, the bottom, and it's coming off the page right over the top. Okay. Blend, blend it out into that blue, soften it, give it the bottom. The bottom might cover that cloud, but that's all right. That's what creates them over our head. Okay, now it's important to get this one's bum. And put him over that. There, we'll get him up there. And I want to bum that down and then bring it up into that cloud. I don't want to bring it down here because this is what's creating the clouds over our head, putting all the bums on them. And just a bit of yumminess to crack it up. And I don't know, we'll just put one somewhere here, coming off the page, but as a V. There we go. They're always, if anything, I'm putting points pointing into the middle. And it's just giving the illusion that they're over our head. It's pointing to the center of the painting. Get this just right off there. It's paint right off it. Okay. And it needs the bottom. So we've got to put that bottom on with this magenta and grey. That's going to give it the bottom. Practice these layout of clouds. If you think you're liking it but you're not grasping it properly yet, you still might need practice on this. And then, of course, some yumminess. We could put some here. All right, that's enough for our sky, and we'll compare the two skies now. Okay, we've got, if you had a horizon line there, you could see that the clouds are going to come over our head. Now, going back to the old one, it wasn't bad for a beginner, but you could see the difference in the cloud layout from this one. Now we've done the sky. The, 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 the colours are more real, the shapes are more real, and... The end product is going to look more realistic, and you can do it. Now, for the lower half of the painting, I've got raw sienna dark, turquoise out of a tube, ultramarine blue, and some black, and I've got some titanium white. I've got a little bit of cadmium yellow light here. I don't know if I'll need that or not, but I'll put it there anyway. But these are going to be the different values of the water, and that'll be the sand dune. Now, grab yourself some low-tack masking tape and use the top of the tape and work out where you want your horizon line, whether you want it down here, how high up you want to go. I want it about there. So I'm going to flip. That's the part there. That's where I want it. Okay. I'm going to use my applicating brush, and I've just put it in some water, so it's a bit wet. And I want to grab some of this blue. Can you see what I'm doing here? Yes, you can. And the littlest of black. I want this dark blue. Okay. A bit more. There's no retarder in this or nothing. So I want the, the tightest, darkest band out there. Just get it onto the board there. I've dried the board. I don't know whether I told you or not, but I just told you again. Okay. Get some more of that. Get that dark out there. We don't want it grey, we want it blue. Dark blue. Oh, my 
phone's ringing. That's dark blue. I don't know, but it probably looks black on there. Add some white with it, so you can see. Now I want to add blue just under this one here. Just about there. Okay, it's still picked up a lot of that white underneath. Maybe I shouldn't have. That'd be alright. Now I'm picking up the blue. I'll just get the blue way out there. I don't want it too brightly blue. I want it sort of grey blue. Massaging it in there. So I'm picking up the turquoise on my applicating brush. I want to sort of about there. I'm stamping it on. Then I can start brushing it through. And it'll come lighter as it comes closest to the front. So just get it in there like that. Come a bit lighter as we come to the front. Now wipe your brush. There's a lot of build up on that. Okay, but see that tight. I want to soften that. There we go. So we sort of got a grey blue dark colour out there. Now we'll just put the littlest bit of white with that to lighten it. Down here. This will just make it lighter. So we've got a couple of bands there of water. Carefully get up there. I don't want to kill too much of that dark. That can scatter down here, or a bit more lighter there. Scatter it down there like that. And just every now and then in that light bit, you can just add the pocket of dark. Sometimes they have pockets of dark in there, okay? Get someone there. Then I've just cleaned that brush. You can use that or another one. And I want to just lengthen them through there as well. I might even just use my finger so I'm not dirty in that brush. Let's just see what I mean. You, you put some, some of that there. Now I'm grabbing the raw sienna dark. I'll just dampen my brush a little bit. So it'll move properly. Now before we do the bits coming down the side, this is the bit that's meeting the water. So we'll scrunch, scrumble, paint, scratch, whatever that in there. Get it in there. Okay. Add a bit of white to it to... Look at that. Beautiful. Now that you got it to the turquoise colour, you want to sort of, if anything, scrumble it together and then put some pockets of this just into the watercolour as well. Now, my paint's picking up the brown and putting it in parts of the green I don't want it to do, so I'm going to just wipe it on a paper towel just so as we got some of this coming in there as well. Now I'm going to brush it all even. So we've got a beautiful transition of that water meeting the sand here. Now, get it a bit lighter because sand isn't dark as buggery like that out there in the ocean. So I'm going to lighten it up a bit more. Just like that. And if you think you've lightened it too much, well, put the colour back like that. Hang on, I've run out. Anyway, that's the tone I want it. Picked up some of the cadmium yellow light that I said I'll see if I need it. And I'm going to, the lighter bits here, you want sort of that greener colour. So that yellow mixed with that turquoise is going to give us that green beach. Well, that's what we get like in Australia anyway. So we'll get that green sort of happening in the water as well. Just in the shallow it's subtle, but it's there. I'll just do a few more. Now 
That's it. You need that green in there. Now, like I said about knowing your brushes, I got myself, I know how this one works for me, and I'm going to use a flathead brush. I'll just dampen it a bit, wipe the water off, and I want to chisel on some titanium white, okay? And find yourself a dark band, which is probably, there's one about here somewhere. So you want to stamp on some white and just give an indication of a a subtle wave out there. Bit of a hump in it because that hump is the actual wave. So now I'm grabbing my little scrumbling brush or blending brush and I want to leave the the hard top side of it there and just soften the bottom very gingerly. It's so easy to kill that hard edge up there. You want some of this paint bleeding into the green there. It's very minimal but it'll, it'll, it's, it's nice. And you can also pick up some of the dark turquoise and then stamp in here dark just like that because that, that's very wet still that's why it, and then we're gonna carefully just merge that soften them together Now that is very wet, I'm finding it very wet, so I'm gonna dry it, but just a little bit. I'll put this darker, I can paint it on there now, and see where your lights are. You put the odd oh, little bit of dark under there and bring it forward. There we go. Now I wanna, soften that into the the bottom color blue a bit forward just so as we've got a darker area in there and get something a bit softer here and then we'll crisp up the white bit again tracing in some darker elements in this water here it's very I can feel it grabbing and tacky that's that's good it's going to grip and merge and we'll probably put a bit over here as well so we can probably get something darker here just to create another wave so let's do another one differently here put in your darker color wedge it out that way and scramble that in that same brush I want to use the same one because I find it was working great and I want to put a little bit of a white water breaking on top of this wave as well just like that and this one here we've sort of lightened the load of that white so what I'll do is I'll just intensify it very gingerly I'll put some of it breaking down there you want the top of it nice and sharp you want it really really you know, like you want it tammy sharp. You want it sharp as buggery, man. That's it. Some of this can have some movement there. Not too much, because that's just dirty seaweed. There we go. This is the turbulent area, so we want to kind of keep that dark bit. We want to put something just in front, and we're going to do this sort of behavior. Do a bit and stop, because we want to... Let's hope that didn't dry too quick on me. Oh, it did. See, that had to scramble in. All right, I'll have to do it again. So... Do I put a bit on there, scrubble, scrunch it into that blue colour there. I've just put the slightest bit of water. Come on. Here we go. Because this is turbulence. Normally on the, the flat area in front of the waves is turbulent. A little bit here. Get rid of any deliberate brush strokes so they look like nature's movements in water. Let's 
let's get some more of this there, quickly put it on and quickly scrumble it. That's because I dried it, which is alright. And once you've done that, you can detail the edge of that just with some real sharp frothy bits on it. I'm using this same brush and what I'm putting on with that, I'm using that to do the the scrumbling merging movements, okay? So yeah, like soften them back. And then this this bit here will have a deliberate white bit on it. Oh, it wasn't going to be a wave, was it? Oh well, it is now. All this is scrumbly turbulent water. Before I get too ahead of you, this this wave here, this is this is at least a wave. I've just got some more white and I want to detail some of this crashing down bit over all that. Because if anything this part here crashed down now, same thing, the, the, the water that's coming over the, the sand dunes, here it is here. You want to keep the bottom edge sharp and merge this scrumble it back into the water. I'm using the same brush because it's dried a bit too much on me here. Normally I lay it on, it's a bit wetter. There we go. Keep these very horizontal. We'll do another one coming over that. There it is there. And then we're going to sort of horizontal movements off it, killing the top edge of it and moving all the turbulence into the ocean here. It's that simple. Some of them can be louder than others, where it's more, more movement in the water, more motion in your ocean. We're going to have a sand dune there, don't forget, so I'm just sort of painting off that area. And before we finish here, we'll finish detailing this so we don't have to come back to it as well. Just adding some darker elements to the sand here. And then we'll add the dunes. So I've done that. I'll quickly wipe the brush and flavour it through the sand there like that. You want the sand to look wet. Turquoise, dancing in some darker areas, wiping it off. Um, Scrumbling it together as well, just so as I can um, crack on some really beautiful white highlights under this turbulent water here. Yellow with that turquoise, just to make a darker green in here, so pockets of this are dark as well. Adding a sense of more realness to your painting. And then we'll just crack it up with some beautiful white. Not too much though. And that green colour, I've just that looked a bit empty there, so I've just added a bit of lightness within these rolls of wave here as well. just to give some sort of light showing through that dark water. Getting some yellow. Not too much, and then there's a very lightest bit in here. You want to dance a little bit on, wipe it off your brush, and then merge that into that greeny color, just so we've got some sort of light 
shining through there just a bit there just to lighten some of that up we're just very gingerly getting some highlights in here over some of this froth where the light's hitting it I've just added some white breaker lines out here just where the water's breaking out in the deepest part of the ocean I'm adding a bit of the dark just underneath them just to give them a sense of realism as well and I've also put a bit where that wave was splashing because it wasn't quite right needed the darks in there now we want to get this looking like water hitting water with some splashes here and there don't kill it too much Ian now we'll just look at the difference from the ocean in this one how we've stepped it up just from putting basic colors and dragging some lighter and darker values through there we've just added more turbulence in the water and a bit more realism oh, okay we're going to get onto the sand dunes now so we'll work out a layout I want this water in the middle of the sand dunes coming at us so I just pour, sort of put something on this side and this side and you know the sand dunes can be just what would you say plain sand or they can have foliage growing in them as well okay I'm just picking up some of the darker value of um, turquoise in my script liner because we need to put the shadow under here very thinly wiggle your hand like you've just stolen something and you're nervous and someone's looking at you and you feel guilty wiggle your hand like that all right and we're just sinking this rolling foam onto the sand there and work out, oh, I'm going to come across there. <laughs> you want your brush wet. You don't want this, as you're dragging it, to break up. Because it starts looking like snot then. Let's get that there. Wiggle your hand, twist your brush as you do it. That way it allows it to be a lot sharper in the way nature intended it. It looks natural. How's that looking? That's all right, I just got to see a bit over here. <clears throat> I'm picking up the flathead brush. I've got some of the darker turquoise in here, and I'm just kind of putting shadows under some of the light areas to give it that more detail and obviously more sense of realism. It's not realism painting, but you, we're working our way there. And I've just sort of gentled that a bit more as well. We've got our raw sienna dark, got some white there as well. So we'll map it in. So I want to come off the painting. Now I'm going to dry that so as we can build it up. This bit here, I want to merge into there a bit, just so it's got a sense of joining up. Let's just leave it like that. Now I'm grabbing the same brush. I'm just using white. There's the raw sienna dark there. I'm just using the white. This is still a bit wet. And I want to marble this up now. Just like that. There. Wipe the brush. I've done that on the edge. Wipe the brush okay and then continue here coming back into there and you can make different lays in that sand dune all right 
And let's do the other side. It's still wet. Coming down, coming down, all the way over there. Wipe your brush. Push it on and start pulling back into your dune. All right, I hope you're enjoying this trip into this painting as we get along here today, all right? Now, almost finished. We've pretty much got the, the sand dunes in there. Do whatever colour you love to do and what works for you. I'm just showing you this. It doesn't mean you have to use these colours, okay? Now, I've got some dark here, so I just want to put some foliage. We'll sign it and that'll be it, all right? I've just got some forest green out of the tube. I'm using my small filbert brush for detailing it and some cad yellow light so we can get some foliage onto those dunes there. Now we've got some dark here. Let's just sort of get some sort of foliage growing over the dark, coming into the dark. So I'm going to sort of do it in like umbrella thick umbrella shapes growing down into the dark just like that sort of raining down and then we can highlight it I love using this little filbert brush so I'm just getting all this forest green little umbrella shapes but making my mounds of them where I want them to be coming down now I'm going to do one side. I'll I'll do the other side off camera. Now we're finished stamping them. I've dried that. Now just by grabbing some of the cad yellow light, we'll mix up another value of green here. Just so we've got something a bit lighter than what's up there. Now we want to go to the top of this very detailly. Now leave the bottom, if anything, leave all the bottom dark. And we're just going to highlight the tops. You can dribble down the bottom a little bit. Yeah, that's a bit more. We just want some. Just on the very top of it. And then we'll add a brighter piece to show inside and out. this one here it's just a more kind and pleasant way to stamp in your foliage now grabbing some more of the yellow you could see what we had there okay mix it up I'll have a look in the monitor just to see how that's looking for me. I've just mixed up the burnt umber and the yellow to mix up that dead grass colour just to put under there. Okay, finish that. Just some of that burnt umber that I've got on the um, palette there. I want to grab some in my brush. My brush is wet, so I'm trying, trying to dry it because I just want to um, put some shadow Okay, just mixed a bit more yellow with the lighter colour. Now we'll just sort of 
finish it off and then we'll consign this All right, I'll just put a signature in here. I want a very small one. Okay, now we'll put a frame on that. Let's see how she looks. There we go. Now that's not too shabby. It's a bit more going on to the realistic side compared to the other one, okay? So that's what we're trying to achieve here. We've got a beautiful realistic sky with clouds coming over our head. We've got a decent ocean that's not too loud and cartoony. And we've got our dunes on the foreground. I mean, we even could have put a fence in there if we want. We could have kept going on and on and on. So there we go. You've got a big difference between the two. All right. So I want to try and get used from this to this with your beginning journey of painting, all right? All right, be sure to look at the links in the description below. There's quite a few in there, okay? And click on the appropriate one that might help you out. Hope you like what we did here today. If you did, tell your friends, but if you don't, you better tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.